right, so back to this. Uh, one more. Uh, well, not one more, but another uh, black screen video on MLB episode that I just finished. Right, uh, and this one, man, holy shit. Uh, what was this episode 14? If I had watched this episode before I did the tier list, I probably would have rated Marinette higher. Because, again, in this one, we get a, we get our backstory, right? And it actually makes you feel for... It, it does two things at once, right? It accomplishes two things. And I'm just going to get right into it, right? Uh, again, you know, A, it makes you feel for her, right? Because we actually, like, this is crazy. We saw her before she met her miraculous right before she was ladybug we don't really see that in the show i mean you get the brief glimpse in you know uh was it the last episode of season one the first one that takes place chronologically however in this episode it's a year before then because it's just the prior year right so again a big thing and what it comes down to there is um yeah, this is really, that's really the only time we see her when she doesn't have a miraculous. Just because we, we don't really see, uh, I'd say them specifically, more so referring to Marinette and, you know, Adrian, right? Before, again, they had the miraculous, right? So, but, again, right? And then what that does is, and this is kind of what I was getting into, right? Because we see it before miraculous, does two things. One you know, it makes you feel for her because, again, you know, uh, she had the crush on Kim, right? And then Kim was kind of manipulated by, you know, Chloe into doing something nasty. But also, to be fair, that is 100% on Kim being stupid and, like, an actual genuine, like, idiot. Like, that is 100% on him. So it makes you feel bad for Mariana due to, again, you know, the harassment, embarrassment, you know, there, right? And again, because after that, she professes, you know, she's not going to... You know, little boy until, you know, she knows everything about him, which explains why she practically stalked Adrian at the beginning of the show. But again, you know, the second thing there is it really paints and portrays Chloe, you know, as just, again, this kind of like wicked, you know, evil person, right? Which again, you know, I mentioned how she could have and or should have had, you know, a redemption arc, right? You know, for her character, which just never happened. And it seems like, you know, they just went fully down and committed to, again, her just being this depraved, like, evil, like, tainted sort of person. Uh, with no, like, you know, what would you call it? Um, depravity, right? Or anything like that. But, again, you know, and it does that successfully, right? But it's like, yeah, I mean, they've committed to that route. So, you know, again, it's, it's, it accomplishes two things there, right? Again, you know with that specifically and again the most and again you know because we even see adrian at the end right after again he realizes this hey not only does he go ape shit on you know kim when he's akumatized right as chat noir because again by this point i guess he's based there he's basically with Marin at this point right they're still sorting things out but they're basically together so again not only was he angry for her right you know but it's also something to where it's like you know he's also angry at chloe i mean we see in the end his you know, conversation with Chloe basically demanding that she apologize. And then basically, you know, when she says no and that she doesn't care, right? He just cuts things off with her. He's like, yeah, we're done, right? Like, you know, I don't care. Like, basically, like, yeah, we're not friends anymore. Like, I don't care the history we have together. I don't care what our parents do. Uh, we're just not a thing. Like, you know, um, again, based on that, which, you know, power to him, right? Um, and then, yeah, the big thing there, again, that's just... Uh, but that was kind of inevitable with the direction that they chose for Chloe's character, just really making her wicked and depraved and evil there, right? So, again, with that, right? And if they are actually going to make her relevant, honestly, I might have bumped her character up, right? If they are going to actually, like, go and make her relevant, like, bef as opposed to just being this kind of, like, like, thematic, like, freaking, like, just mean girls, like, high school bull. If she's actually going to play some role part of the story, maybe I could have put her character up, too, but... Again, you know, that's what that does. And there are a couple of interesting things that were going on what happened. So, again, the first thing, right, was that um, and one thing I noticed, Marinette had a different hairstyle. Specifically, she wore a bun, right? And we see, again, you know, obviously in the present day, we, see, we know she wears pigtails. However, I think the interesting thing there and to note is it was what the older, like, Sabine girl who was protecting and defending Marinette. 
So the sneaking suspicion, you know, and this was from a year ago in the flashbacks, right? But the sneaking suspicion there, and what I suspect is that that's why, again, she started wearing pigtails to model after her, given that, you know, she was kind of someone uh, Marinette looked up to and like a role model in the past, right? Before, obviously, you know, she gained her superpowers and became Ladybug. But, you know, the uh, big thing there being that, yeah, I, I just want to point that out as I found that really interesting. And then, again, it's kind of ironic because it's almost a role reversal in the modern day, right? To where, again, we saw Sabine literally cosplaying as Ladybug, you know, helping out people. Like, sort of fading being the real one. But, again, you know, kind of ironic there. But something I just wanted to point out, you know, with that. Right. But then also, you know, uh, along with that, right, it's something to where what I also wanted to point out, right, was that, you know, again, it's something where Marinette's friends have pretty much been with her and had her back the whole time. Right. Um, and it, it's something to where because obviously, you know, Adrian, I guess, even though she's the one she kind of has, well, I guess now she's literally in a relationship. He's the one who kind of comes along, you know, uh, at the end. Right. Or I guess, you know. Uh, cause it, it's, if we look at the chronological timeline, right? Well, I guess I've stopped trying to keep track of a timeline, but basically you have a year before they gain their superpowers, right? That's, you know, what happens in the flashbacks. Then you have the first episode where she literally meets Adrian, right? You know, but by that point, she'd already known all her friends, like I had mentioned. So it's something to where I, I don't really think she's met anyone who I guess would be within her friend group or circle after that. But again, it's like, you know, the big thing there we see is that like, they've all been pretty tightly. It wasn't like, you know, she was kind of alienated and isolated and she got, you know, again, only developed them, you know, during the show, right? Uh, but I guess we kind of already knew that, right? Because it goes into the show with her having these friends. But, and that just, again, goes to show, you know, her character, right? You know, and how uh, she she is good, you know, socially, right? When it comes to uh, making friends and kind of interacting with people and stuff like, obviously, bar, you know, anyone she might have feelings for, which... Funny enough, she did a pretty good job at, you know, actually, like, you know, what would you call it? Kind of acting towards Kim and expressing her feelings towards him, right? He just completely fought. Like, he was completely an idiot being stupid there. Like, this episode just made me hate Kim for no reason, right? Because you're just a complete idiot and, like, you're you're just genuinely, like, stupid. Like, if... Because, A, not always a non-harmless prank. B, it's like, you know, you'd think after it, right? You know, you'd be... Because it's, okay, Chloe, she just hates Marinette and is evil. Kim is just a complete idiot and unaware of his actions and the repercussions. It's like, if he realized after he's like, this was, why did I do this, right? Or if he was like in the process and he's like, this is stupid. Why am I doing this, right? It'd be a different story. But like, dude, like you really followed through with that plan and then you stood by it even into the present day. It's like, it'd be one thing afterwards you realize it was wrong and made up for it, but it's like, dude, this is like a year later, right? It takes at least a year later, probably more. You know, again, it's just, dude, I thought I was going crazy because we saw like, I guess her having like PTSD and flashbacks, you know, in the beginning of the episode. I'm like, what is this? At first I thought it was a premonition to the future or something. I'm like, dude, is she just gained a new power? But again, you know, rather it's about the past and dude, like, freaking, uh, A, like, and the, I forgot Kim's girlfriend's name, right? You know, whatever her name was. But, again, it, it's just, it's up the door. It's, like, just the lack of self-awareness, like, because, again, you know, Chloe, right, you can kind of keep her in check. I mean, she doesn't have Miraculous, and the only reason she has power is because her dad's the mayor, right? But, you know, if you get some other pot, like, again, you know, she has no real power and influence over Adrian, right? You know, that's simply because his dad's also in a position of power even though chloe's mother you know is this famous like new yorkan right i mean she practically hates chloe fine enough but again that's the uh big thing there right but you got other people in position of power and you can just keep her in check right you know it's like freaking like especially without you know adrian being close to his dad like i have no surprise you know if he brings this up to his dad his dad's probably gonna take it it's also weird though because again his dad tried to get kumatize him but whatever you know but again it's just something to work yeah, you know, you can just keep them in check that way. But then it's like, yeah, I mean, freaking, uh, at the end of the day, because the, it seems like at this point, Chloe's just going to get taken advantage of by Lila, right? Because Chloe's just basically just a bad person all around, right? You know, maybe if she were raised by better parents, because she has very shitty and crappy parents. But again, at least with, with you know, the, what would you call it? The, uh, Conditions set, this was really the only inevitable, like, 
you know, outcome for her to become, right, and type of person she would become. So, again, it's just like, yeah, you know, whatever there, you know, just, yeah. But, you know, that genuinely, you know, here's the thing, and what I think is most interesting. We are, you know what, what's going to be hilarious is if this happens in the next episode. We're, what, like 14 episodes in? We've seen Felix maybe once, and this is what, again, you know, and also bringing it all the way back to the whole Marinette backstory thing. This is the main issue with the show. It has no aim or direction. It took 120, however many episodes it's been, more than 120. It's probably been closer to 100, you know, 30, 120, 130 episodes to get Marinette backstory, like, of the main character in the series. Like, dude, I mean, and then along with that, right, and what we're seeing and what I'm mentioning and bringing up is... You know, again, we went the whole season without seeing Felix. I mean, we barely even saw Lila, who we didn't even see at all in season four. It's like, again, like, the, the show just has no aim or direction. Like, what would be hilarious is if Felix makes an appearance in the next episode, episode 15. But there's just no aim or direction. Like, he got the Peacock Miraculous and then sat on it for fucking ten however many parts or episodes. It's like, dude, like, again, it, it's just... Problem there being that it's like, yeah, show is no show or aim or direction, you know. It's not going to finish at this rate. Um, I mean, the fact that Hawkmoth just doesn't immediately win. Funny enough, I was thinking about JoJo's, right? He could literally give himself the ability to stop time. I don't think that would interfere with any other one. You could make an argument it would interfere with the other time-based ones. But it's also weird to where it's like, okay, you know. um, Yeah, like, not with their specific function they just are nullified by it so dude and he can give himself like you know power to become like intangible or something right you know literally unable to be hit like freaking kamui from naruto right like dude can give himself like and he could just like the fact that he isn't r1 like was astounding and mind-boggling right he knows luca knows who they are which even if Luca flees Paris, he literally can teleport. So I don't understand why, you know, that's relevant. Um, he knows freaking, um, what is it? Uh, uh, what's it called? Chat Noir has some, you know, connection and or feelings for Marinette, who also happens to be Elaine, but right. But, you know, the thing there, being, it's just like, yeah, you know, okay with that. Uh, like, it doesn't do it again. It, it's just weird. Like, uh, we'll we'll see we'll see i'm, I'm gonna end it here because i want to watch the next part but it's like at least we finally got some fucking marionette backstory but with that i don't really have anything else to say i'm just gonna end it here so yep that's it for this one see you in the next one